Hi, my name is Tim Middleton. I'm a software engineer with the Coherence Development Team here at Oracle. Welcome to this screencast which provides an overview of the Coherence Demonstration application. The application displays fictional stock prices and showcases Coherence general features and capabilities, including cluster and data sharding, scalability and high availability, disk-based persistence, parallel queries, efficient aggregation, in-place processing, federation, which is a grid addition feature only, Lambda support and open tracing support. The application is web-based using Angular and Bootstrap with the UI accessing Coherence via JAXRS endpoints. It can be run as a standalone jar, which I'll show you today, or deployed to Kubernetes via the Coherence operator. It uses the Oracle Bedrock framework to start and stop additional Coherence processes, as well as a secondary cluster for federation. By default, the application uses Coherence Community Edition, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I've built it using Grid Edition to showcase federation. So let's run the application. This will start a Coherence Cache Server and the JAXRS endpoints, and also load some mock data into the application before it starts up the UI. So this is just a splash screen explaining a bit about the demonstration. So the demonstration application shows various information regarding this fictitious stock prices, including the aggregated value and positions, the time taken to do these aggregations, the distribution of the data amongst the servers and the number of servers that are there. Let's check real-time price updates. So this will randomly move the prices up and down. Firstly, let's add a number of servers and see how the data is automatically sharded. As the additional server starts, the data is automatically sharded or balanced across the storage servers. During this time, we can see the data stays consistent across while rebalancing. Also, the time to query is reduced as there are more servers available and therefore processing can be carried out in parallel. Just about there. Just about to start the last one up. There we go, you can see the time has actually reduced considerably. Each object in the cache by default has a prime end backup on a different server. And as a consequence, if I stop a server, we can see that the data is retained as the backup is promoted to a primary and a new backup is made. So I'll stop server five. And even with that server stop, we can still see there's 10,000 positions there. If there are multiple machines and data centers involved, then data will be backed up across those machines, providing site resilience. The number of backups could be increased from the default for additional resilience. Let's enable tracing on the cluster members to show the open tracing in action. We'll just give it a short amount of time to start collecting the stats and then we'll open the Jaeger UI. Okay, we can see that the tracing is enabled here. If we go back to the Jaeger UI, we can see we've got the service here, which is the Perth cluster. And let's choose the get chart data endpoint, which is a JAXRS endpoint. So find traces. We can see there are a number of spans there, so let's select one of them. We'll reduce the time frame a little bit. So let's expand that to see a bit more. So we can see here that the, the chart data, or the get chart data resource is a JAXRS endpoint. So because we had checked the update prices, then what it does during here is it does a few size requests to get information on different caches. And then it calls this update prices. As part of update prices, what it's doing is doing invocation. So on this particular member one, it's going to do an invocation and that's going to be processed on a separate member. So member number three, where the data is, that's going to be processed there to update the prices. 
And then as part of that, there's actually a backup. Backup request starts on member three, and the data is then backed up across to member four. As part of this too, when the data is backed up, or the primary is backed up, there's a cache store operation. So we can also see that a cache store operation is done in parallel with the backup request as well. We can see that the tracing is comprehensive as it can track from a JAXRS request, the invocation within the cluster, the primary and backup requests, all the way to a JPA cache store. Let's now go back to the demonstration. So the federation feature, which is available only in GE, allows you to federate data typically between geographically and separate data centers. In this case, it just replicates data between two clusters on the same machine. There's no need to change the application for this to happen. It's done purely in configuration. In this case, we have a primary cluster called Perth, and so I've just selected to start federation, and we have a secondary cluster in Sydney. So if I click on here to get to the Sydney dashboard, you can see that started up, and we can see that the totals are slowly updating. So what happens is when you start, by default we set it to federate everything immediately, and we'll see that in a moment or two that the totals add up to the same. And as we can see, the real-time price updates are also coming through as well here. So let's add trades here. Let's add 10,000 trades in the Perth cluster. So we'll see that these 10,000 trades are added in the Perth cluster. If we go back over to Sydney cluster, that will come through in a moment. There we go. So 10,000 trades in the Sydney cluster. Because we've configured these two clusters as active-active, if I add 5,000 trades in the Sydney cluster, that will then get replicated back to the Perth cluster. So that's 115. You can see it updating now. 115. So there's two-way replication here, and it can be set up any way that you like, depending on your requirements. Before we look at persistence, let's look at a couple of operations here. We can stop replication, we can pause replication, and then we can force to do a replicate all. Let's now look at persistence. What I want to do is I'm create a snapshot. So let's create a snapshot. So you can see here that the snapshot has been created. Now that the data has been snapshotted from memory to disk, I can clear the cache, give that a moment. Okay, the cache is cleared now. What we can actually do then is go and recover the snapshot, which will bring the data as it was at that point in time back into the cache. Here's some more information if you'd like to know more about the demonstration or coherence. Thank you very much for your time.